We want to provide customers and agents easy access to the information they need. We strive to be digital first. We want to enable self-service where we can, both internally and externally. We want these experiences to be as friction-free as possible. Everything needs to be done easy and intuitive. And, as we've heard already, we need to do quality at scale. Not 10,000 agents, but we've got a few. Everything needs, that we do needs to be scalable. Like many retailers, we need to ramp up during the holiday season. Our peak processes need to uh, scale while maintaining our service promise. So there's always been challenges to operating a contact uh, center, but it seems like the com com complexity is growing. Ashu uh, went through some of that just a little while ago. But customers' expectations are changing. Customers are looking for transactions and experiences to be quicker, easier, faster. Regardless of the scenario or what your system and your process is built to support. They're looking to help themselves through digital self-service, but they always, always want and need to have easy access to a real person. A human who can listen to their concern and respond. To help them with their problem. Our agents are now facing more complex questions. Working with better informed customers. We have peeled away the easy questions by enabling self-service capabilities and virtual assistance. Customers have resolved problems on their own. When they reach out, they're looking for answers that they've probably already spent time researching and didn't get, weren't able to resolve. They may already be frustrated or elevated when they get to the point with a customer. With the COVID pandemic, the experience also changed for our agents. As an organization, we quickly transitioned to 100% virtual contact center. 100% remote agents, and became, and I'm sorry, but we became a completely, completely virtual contact center. The knowledge and resources became crucial as the agents no longer had the ability to get help from the peer who was sitting next door. That was key for a long time. Throughout COVID, business did remain strong, but there were new challenges as we worked to control costs without sacrificing the customer experience. And one of our biggest challenges presented in this new environment is <clears throat> the ability to scale virtually. Our contact center workforce almost triples during our peak season. We need to train and support those agents to be more confident, knowledgeable, and friendly during this period. In 2019, we began to reach an inflection point. It, <clears throat> it's about that time that our team began to look at ways we could get more out of our technology. How could we get more out of our technology investments while limiting the demand on our IT department, contain incremental costs, and most importantly, maintain and improve the customer experience? Do more with e-gain is a ma masterful marketing message. It also became an internal imperative and a new opportunity. In 2019, we were using e-gain as a monolithic and expensive email chat template tool with a robust workflow engine. It served as our digital ACD, but that was it. We were barely leveraging its features and capabilities. It was time to take eGain up on the slogan, do more with eGain. This is our journey over time with eGain, starting back in 2013. And as you can see, as we move into 2019, we started to understand that we needed to use the tool just a bit more. For this presentation, I worked with eGain to position the tools within their nomenclature to make it easier for you to reference what I was talking about. But we would often see and think of these as separate entities, and that was part of the problem. We were not connecting the dots. Internally and in conversations with eGain, we would get distracted by licensing about, the, uh, about what this or that entity could do to solve a problem. We never really understood the synergy 
between the capabilities and features. How do the services and integrations support our vision? Here is the current uh, footprint that we have with eGain. As you can see, we are leveraging a wide breadth of the eGain toolset and often realize that we are still scratching the surface. eGain is a powerful and complex platform that does not easily explain itself. It is off or, and it often presents itself or is presented as a discrete set of tools. There is not, in my experience, a great way to learn how these pieces work together. How do you fully leverage its value? My exper experience with the eGain team, they're great at listening and solving very specific problems using their technology. But for us, it has been more difficult to explore, explore and innovate on our own <clears throat> because the platforms of the platform's inherent complexity. But that is changing. As we learn more and gain more confidence, we are beginning to find ways to innovate. Here are a couple of the platform key strengths that we're learning to leverage um, that I thought I would share. There is a consistent administration platform that we can use across channels. Our people can build on their own experience and knowledge as we explore new ideas. And a shout out for working with the managed services team. It has strengthened and improved our understanding of the tools. And as we're here, yes, the Knowledge Hub is the power behind the engine. We had been using eGain and chat for many years. Um, as mentioned earlier, our primary use case had been for email, chat, and I'll actually add social uh, management as well. Through the Desktop Advisor, we were responding to email, uh, using templated responses to answer questions, and allowing for a consistent, accurate, and high-quality uh, responses. Chat, very similar. We had the added function of providing some wake data so that the agent uh, had a sense of where the customer had been. And we also incorporated the digital contacts into the customer history. We maintain a history of the previous digital contacts, which helped solving the problems. Still all pretty basic. But with the challenges that we are facing and concerns about potential staffing during the pandemic, we determined it was time to explore um, a virtual assistant on our website. So we approached this opportunity with a few basic principles. This was scary, especially just before the holidays. But taking these principles, we always wanted to make sure a customer had a clear, efficient path to the agent. We wanted to limit the number of options, a uh, number of options in interaction to get to a solution, to get to an answer. In the beginning, we needed to keep it simple. We believed we could always build off our initial release. We knew this was not going to be a set it and forget it situation. We researched and defined best practices for our brand. And as a side note on the best practices, I would encourage you to try really hard to incorporate this into your design process. I'll share that we were often conflicted with industry standards, best practices, and the desire to support items that differentiate us from our customers, with our customers. The eGain team had some good advice. We didn't always take it. And there are many times looking back now that I wish we'd listened and better understood what was being shared, what was being conveyed to us. They know the capabilities of the tool and with lots of discussion can support your goals. Share your goal, not your solution. They will give you your solution. Work together on the solution. It did take longer than we hoped to get the virtual assistant up and running. We missed our uh, 2020 peak. We'd hoped to have the new capability in place to support peak during COVID. But to accomplish that, we would have needed to implement in the September, October timeframe. We were not confident and decided to defer until January of 2021. But our results have been solid. We're experiencing about a 30% deflection rate. And while we're not ab always able to confirm that the customer is fully self-served, we have not seen traffic defect to another channel. 
and our quality scores have remained solid in this space. Both, both concerns continue to be monitored closely because uh, we want to watch to make sure that we, that doesn't change. Um, I do want to share a couple of our experiences uh, once we were up and running. We've had some of this discussion this morning as well. But we began to learn the importance of understanding the data. We, need to learn to, we needed to learn to live with the data. Look at it objectively as, as from as many lenses as possible. It's easy to validate your own assumptions with what you're seeing versus understanding what the data is telling you and what you might need to change. We realized that it was key to have support from the right per people during the hypercare phase. Communications, it's, it's an organizational effort, but communications, training, internal and external support. Maintaining that support with, with whoever your vendor is. Uh, I will share that eGain was a great partner during this deployment. Make sure you have a plan B, C, and D, just in case A doesn't go as planned. We quickly learned the necessity of flexing and changing courses. Have a fail-safe option if things don't go, go as planned. Be willing to backtrack, learn, and adjust. We heard a little bit about agile or agility this morning. It, it is critical when you take these risks. Document everything. Can't say that enough. We're excited uh, by the new capabilities that will be available in our R21 and our ability to serve, to build, create, and deploy additional bots on our own. That is huge to us. Unfortunately, we also uh, put out an email deflection tool, an attempt. Uh, we have not, we've had less success in email deflection. The majority of our incoming email are, are replies and questions associated with an outbound service or promotional email. Only about 25% of our inbound email contacts originate out of our web form. And we're not seeing the high self-serve or deflection rates that we're experiencing with the virtual assistant and some of the other things that we're doing. Um, as we continue to better understand our customer goals, as they enter into the web forum and that experience, we'll continue to learn. This just may, be, may not be the experience customers are looking for. We also recognize there's a lack of content, knowledge, exposed in this customer journey. And we will continue to explore ways to enhance it. On the other hand, eNotify has been a great tool for our customers and customer service team. The numbers here, 57,000, may be small to some other eNotify users. Um, however, it has filled a huge gap uh, for our customer service teams. Our marketing and content teams already had a pro uh, process for promotional and, and service email, but the process is formal, highly structured, and often had a very long lead time. And it was not easily leveraged by our customer satisfaction teams. What we were missing was a quick response process for ad hoc messages. It needed to be low effort, high quality, and dynamic. eNotify enabled us, particularly at peak, to reach out and connect with customers in a timely and efficient fashion. We created about seven templates uh, that can be modified and address most of our scenarios with very, very short lead time. It often takes us longer to generate and massage the mailing list for inclusion in the email than it does to to get the message out. In the past, our first approach would have been to round up a team of agents and begin manually sending out email, and probably, or making outbound calls, often only to leave a, a cryptic message on voicemail <laughs> containing limited information and asking the customer to call us. eNotify has been a great solution to that problem. We learned a lot as we went through the virtual assistant, eNotify, web, um, web deflection forms, and also continuing to work with our chat and email experiences. We've discovered new opportunities for our email uh, templates, Solve, and, and our reporting tools. We had begun to embrace and understand the op opportunity that the platform offers. Most importantly, we began to better understand the critical role that Knowledge Hub could play. Corporately, we're a Microsoft shop, leveraging the full Office 365 suite for cross-department col collaboration and communication. Outlook teams and SharePoint have become part of our everyday lives, especially now that we're virtual. 
But we are still dependent on our, we were still dependent on our legacy uh, internal internet site for our policy and procedures for our frontline reps. I won't share with you exactly how legacy that was. <laughs> but anyways, the legacy website needed to be retired and there was an internal push for CS to move forward with the rest of the organization and develop a SharePoint site for our agents. You know, leverage existing investments. However, SharePoint was not an effective approach for our frontline reps. When it came to delivering process and procedure in real time, it wasn't going to work. And so we looked to eGain's knowledge management platform to do the job. The learning and commu communications team embarked on a, well, I wasn't active, but it was a long and tedious process of inventorying our existing content um, and work closely with eGain to discover the best way to migrate all that content uh, into the knowledge hub. Our team and the eGain team collaborated on the design of what we now refer to as CS Guide. The CS, the new site offers a host of features uh, for our frontline agents, solid search capabilities, type ahead features, bookmarks, trending searches, all the conveniences, modern conveniences that these agents expect. This month, uh, we will be rolling out personalization, actually probably this week, um, to the CS Guide. So we're taking the information and we're um, iterating on it and now creating it to a more personal, well, more responsive to what your role is in CS. It will provide targeted content. It'll reduce the noise the users are experienced. When they get results that aren't related, at least it'll be classified. Um, to work that they that they they are doing, and so they'll get better there. Post peak, so in January, we'll go live with our guided help. Um, it is designed to support all of you of our users, but we anticipate particular su success with the uh, seasonal workforce. It'll also be a great asset to our regular employees as we roll out new policies and procedures. Although too early to evaluate, we anticipate seeing increased accuracy handling times, and most importantly, we'll be able to support a superior customer experience with the knowledge and friendly um, approach. I also want to take a moment to highlight the eGame Managed Services offering. I previously mentioned the challenges that we had completely getting up to speed on the platform. There's just a lot of opportunity wrapped in complexity, hidden in technical PDFs and knowledge articles. One of our best investments was made in eGain Managed Services. They have been a wonderful mix of staff augmentation, support, knowledge transfers, and have a keen ability to work through the eGain organization, through their support and professional services, to help us get the answers we need. The Managed uh, Services team has helped in developing macros. They've uh, served as system administrator, administrators, reporting queries, authoring flows, They've, they update the intent, uh, intent engine and training for new intents on the virtual assistant, gadget and widget creation and analytics, and just reporting on issues and opportunities across the platform. So what's next? We're looking forward to the upgrade to R21. And it's been a bit of time and waiting, but we're looking forward to that in uh, in January, I think we'll be going live with that. Um, but in particular, we're looking uh, forward to the ability to develop and deploy additional bots to both support our internal agents and also to do some more targeted deployment on our website. We're also going to be looking for ways to increase visibility of the customer facing virtual assistant. That's a sign of confidence. We've learned, we'll continue to learn. Um, that's good. We had a limited number of uh, use cases that we, that we did initially, and we're looking to expand upon those. Um, and we're really looking to improve on the dialogue between the user, so the customer and the virtual assistant, or the agent and the virtual assistant. How can we make that more human-like? Um, we need to be transparent. You are talking to a machine, but how can we make it a bit more normal in the conversation? 
And then we're really looking to uh, use the new reporting analytics to better understand particularly the productivity of our, our agents. Uh, we believe they're very productive. It's just kind of hard to prove it sometimes. I also wanted to take a moment and uh, say thank you um, to the Egan rock stars, but really to the managed services, I've already mentioned them, but Rajan, Ravindra, Owen, and Indranel, our support Tam, Pooja, our knowledge consultant, uh, Tristan, and also um, take a moment to thank Teo and Sanjeev, who've been on this journey with me. Hasn't always been uh, pleasant for any of us, but it's been very rewarding. And I also want to take a moment uh, to thank the team back home. There are a lot of folks who make all of this work, uh, but a special call out to Jeff, Michaela, and Mick, who are not here with us. So with that, thank you for your time.